All right, it is time to get this show started. It's time to dive into the treacherous world of Crusader Kings 3 with a fresh look at live gameplay from our newest grand strategy game. Please give a warm welcome, which we'll happily accept over the internet, to game designer Alexander Ultner and community developer Rod Del Rue. Hi, Paula. Thanks for having us. Hi, welcome. Thank you. So you just dropped some major news for Crusader Kings. Mm -hmm. The game will be released on September 1st, yes. which is literally around the corner, and pre-orders are live right now. Mm -hmm. Rod, how has the reception in the community been so far? It's been so good. Uh, people are really appreciating the dev diaries that we're putting forward. Uh, we have fans that have loved seeing the new religious system that we have and also the lifestyle still system that adds, to, you know, just that little extra layer of RPG. So it's been pretty good. We're super happy. Good. And uh, Alex, how is the mood in the dev team right now? Oh, it's uh, fantastic. The team has been working really, really hard. And of course, it's both frightening and exciting to get feedback from our fans like this. We love the game and we love all the feedback we're getting. And we're counting down the hours to September 1st. Wonderful. Rod, uh, tell us a little bit about what you have prepared for us today. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to start with one of the most interesting starting positions in CK3, which is going to be in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, what we want to showcase here is the various decisions that are open to you even before you press play and start playing. It's like taking a look at the various challenges that you are facing before you start the game. Cool. Well, let's dive in, shall yeah, we? Sure. All right. The year is uh, 1066, and we are located in northern Spain. Of course, it's not Spain yet, and it won't be for another 400 years, unless we expedite the process. Northern Spain is uh, divided into a number of uh, Catholic kingdoms that stand against the powerful Moorish realms of the south. In northwestern Iberia, we have three kingdoms ruled by three brothers. We have Galicia, we have Castile, and us in Leon. One new feature in Crusader Kings 3 is the Issues widget at the top. And if we click it, we can see that we are in line to inherit both Galicia and Castile. And see, this is what makes this starting position super interesting. We are playing as Leon, and the only thing that is standing between us and the throne of Galicia is our Castilian brother. And we need to attack him first before rushing for Galicia. If we look at the map, we can see that Galicia is the one that is most open to Moorish attacks. Castile and Leon both have uh, southern mountains that uh, provide a very defensible advantage. Um, if we compare army sizes, we can clearly see that Castile has the biggest army, while we have a middling army. And the young, uh, the young king of Galicia has the smallest army. Um, none of us really have an edge over the other but we might be able to find an ally to support us. And in Crusader Kings, this might mean marriage, right? Absolutely, Paola. Marriage is super key in Crusader Kings 3. If you don't have a marriage, you don't have any allies. And I think we should take a look at the various Iberian uh, countries that we have around us, and I think an Aragon princess would do just fine. Indeed, this Aragonese princess will get us their armies on our side. Next, let's take a look at our king. So all characters in CK3 have five different skills. And we can see here that King Alfonso is very good at intrigue, which means that he can plot and scheme very effectively. And if we appoint a skilled spy master to support our schemes and we get a spouse that enhances our intrigue, we can become even better. And to top it all off, we will pick a lifestyle that really accentuates this focus on scheming. We will pick the Skullduggery focus. Yeah, absolutely. And it's key here to lean into in intrigue. And why is that? Because like Alex was mentioning, we have evenly matched forces against Castille. So we should really lean into that intrigue and start a murder plot to get rid of the brother. <laughs> okay, so the plan is to kill the brother here. Alex, are we moving forward with this? Indeed. Uh, we're going to try and murder our brother. As you can see, we have a 50% chance of succeeding. And... Uh, 
if we are lucky, we can even find more agents in the court of our target that might be convinced by a slight bribe. Yeah, and that's the cool thing with Crusader Kings, right? If you're trying to plot a murder against someone and you don't have enough power to succeed, you can bribe people, but you also have a special perk in the Intrigue lifestyle, which, which essentially allows you to find secrets and dirt on people in your court and then force them to join your plot. Oh, so many different options, but unfortunately we're running out of time here. Uh, but Alex, how do you think that this, this story will play out? Oh, there are so many unanswered questions. Uh, will our plot, plot against our Castilian brother succeed? Will we gain Galicia before uh, Galicia manages to produce um, a legitimate heir? Will we be able to leverage the armies from Castile and Aragon to take over Galicia in time? Can we contain all of this familial treason before we have to fight external <laughs> enemies? There are millions of ways for this to play out. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait a little bit longer, but thank you so much for taking us thank through you, a short thank snippet you. of the drama that you can expect in Crusader Kings 3. Due to be released on September 1st and available for pre-order now. Well, betrayal, assassination, treason, <laughs> kind of feels like we're having a paradox show already. Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. It went down a dark path pretty fast there. Good. But I guess that the next game that we have lined up is not going to disappoint us either. I mean, building a crime empire in the 1920s Chicago is not something that you're going to get away with without bribing a few cops, breaking a few alliances, maybe cutting some questionable deals on the black market. What do you think? Underhanded tactics, politics, taking over the city. These are all things that are very close to where my heart once was. Next up is Empire of Sin. Mm -hmm.